In this lesson, we're going to talk about using an external device with the Syntact so that we're able to receive audio from that external device and also so we can send note messages and CC messages to manipulate that device, sending it sequences or automations from the Syntact. So let's get stuck in. So there's a few things that I want to do to start with. I'm just going to make sure that I've got an initialized patch on there. So it's just a patch with nothing going on, default patch. And then also on the syntax, just going to go to system and make sure that I've turned overbridge back off. So it's on USB and MIDI. So let's just come out of that and let's quickly talk about cable. So obviously, you know, I've got to power both devices and then I need a MIDI out going into the MIDI in on the Typhoon. And then on the Typhoon, I've got left and right going into left and right on the Syntax. Obviously, depending on what piece of equipment you are working on, this may vary. So what we're going to do is we are first going to go onto the Typhoon. Now, I know some of you guys don't have a Typhoon, but that's fine because the ideas are similar. So what I'm going to do is go into the settings, MIDI settings, port configuration, inputs and on this one i'm just going to make sure that i have input usb and midi enabled and then i'm also going to check the midi channel so on this i've got this set up as midi input one so remember that because that's why i've shown you this on the typhon the midi channel is super important and then master clock you can see we've got receive so just follow these steps for whatever device you're working on you want to make sure you're receiving on a specific channel that you've set you want to make sure that it's receiving clock. You want to also make sure that it is receiving... Um, let's just go and have a look at this. Yeah, that's all good. That it's receiving CC and also transport as well for start and stop. Uh, MIDI CC. So on this, the reason why I chose the Typhon for this is that if I go into the CC options you can see i've got a cc list and i don't have to refer to the manual so when we start to send um cc messages and automation from the syntax i don't need to go into the manual to find out the number if i want to modulate the cutoff then i just go down and find cutoff which is number four cc number four really easy to do on this right so what i'm going to do now is we're going to try and set this up so i can send some notes from the syntax to the type and that's our basic starting point so what i'm going to do is come into the settings on here first and we're just going to go through and check everything so the midi settings sync obviously we've got clock receive and transport receive because I, usually i take midi from the digitats and the octa track just ignore that for now what we want to look for is clock send and transport send clock send obviously so i can send the bpm to the typhon and then the transport send is every time i press play you can see it's actually working already stop and play stop some stops and plays the sequencer on the Typhon. Um, let's come up with that and just see if this is coming through. So if I go to the mixer section, to the external mixer, bring this up, and we're not getting anything just yet. Oh, because I need to put the sequencer on. Sequencer is enabled, and you can see if we're going to external inputs, I can bring the audio in, send that into delay, send that into reverb, I can send it to the effects block, and add drive and anything else that's on there like filtering and stuff as well uh, let's switch that back off um, that's your input gain Typhon's pretty quiet so I'm gonna bring it up quite a bit and let's just add a kick to see okay what I'll do actually is just bring the Typhon down a bit so you can hear that that's in time now but what I want to do is turn off the sequencer and I want to be able to send notes to this now but let's just go back into the MIDI config and just check everything else. So we can actually do a program change send as well. I'm not going to do it for this because what we can actually do is send program change messages from the MIDI um, tracks themselves rather than doing it as global. This one's more important when you send in electron devices into other electron devices. Are you enjoying this syntax tutorial and would you like to develop your syntax skills even further? Well, I do have a 14 hour syntax mastery course available which is split into four parts 
The first part, the introductory course, is absolutely free and you can sign up to that by clicking on the link in the video description below. And then following on from that, we go through beginner, advanced and expert, which will take you through basic sound design right through to the advanced features and loads of tips and tricks, which are often people don't really think about. And I'll be pushing the syntax to its absolute limits. I will say though, the introductory course is super, super basic. It's basically there just to give you an idea of how courses are structured in the learning portal. And also to give you an idea of my teaching style, which you are already familiar with from watching my YouTube videos. So don't wait, click on the link in the video description below, sign up, and I'll also send you some offers as well to get discount on the Syntax Mastery courses. So my name is James Orvis, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this tutorial. So let's come out of that and let's go to port config now. So out port function, that's set to MIDI, which is good. That's what we need. You can also do DIN 24. We're going to leave that on MIDI. And then output two, obviously you can either select MIDI, USB. I leave it on MIDI plus USB. Output channel auto, parameter output CC, encoder destination. You can have these emitting MIDI CC messages, but we don't want to do that. I want to be able to keep it quite focused and select on the MIDI tracks what I want sending out. Uh, receive notes, yes, I've got that on. And receive CC. That's if you want to receive um, CC messages and notes from other devices like the Digitat or the Autstrack or something like the MIDI controller that I've got, the PC4. Channels, um, this is for receiving MIDI and also sending actually as well. So they're on different channels. Um, what else have we got? Program change. All of that's fine. We can leave that now. So let's set up um, track nine. I know it's an analog track, but we're only using a kick in this. And then I'm going to go into the uh, machine page. I'm going to select MIDI. So what have we got in the MIDI tracks? We've got the trig page. So on the trig page, we can change the notes, the velocity. And um, we can also do note length. We can do the probability and all of the conditional locks as well. They're all on there. We could do LFO retrigger. And we can also obviously select notes. And if we wanted to, we can use the keyboard. But before we do any of that, we need to go into this page here, the second page, and choose the channel, which is channel one. And then this should work now. So let's bring up the keyboard. Yeah, you can hear that's working. And then what we can also do, if we wanted to, we can enable pitch bend, which is not working for this current um, let me put that back. This current preset, but I can set it up if I wanted to. Um, we can set up after touch as well. These are already like enabled. You don't have to select a CC message for them. Mod wheel's not set up yet, but if I wanted to, I could go in to the settings on here and I could go to mod wheel. Let's bring the cutoff down and then I could go to VCF low pass cut and then turn that all the way up and now you can see i can control the cut off via the mod wheel using the mod wheel option on here and we've also got the same for breath control there as well all of these i can kind of control on the typhon so we've got mod wheel there we've got velocity after touch velocity is obviously connected to this velocity here if you set up some stuff in here like say Low pass cut. Let's turn that all the way up again. I'm just going to use the filter as uh, the demonstration for now. And let's just put in a pattern. Then if we go to velocity and turn it down, you'll notice that it's really low. So what I'm going to do now is just hit um, live record quantized. Just put some random velocities in. So you can hear that the velocity is controlling the cutoff amount. What I might do is just erase those locks. Bring that back down. Come out of keyboard mode. 
I should put them in manually like this. So that's one way of doing it. Let's just reset this. In fact, let me just go load, bring up a new patch, and then let's just clear that. So yeah, that was the pitch bent after touch mod wheel and breath controller. And then the other thing I want to touch upon here is the way that you can change the preset. So I do this often in my live set. When I change the pattern on my Octa track, the syntax changes its pattern, the digitax changes its pattern. And then also my synths also change the presets ready for the next one. So what you could do is enable them. So yeah, I forgot to mention this, but if you want to enable any of these, hold function down and just click them on like so. If I change this now, you can see it's going through the different presets on the Typhon. And I can change the bank as well. So if I go to, actually, if I go to bank four and go to the first lot of um, programs, they are all from my Typhon preset pack, which I know that I've set up after touch a mod wheel. So if I run a sequence as well, so you can hear that's changing the sound. Let's just bring the volume up a little bit of these. Let's go back to this page. Let's change the uh, the program. So you can see each one has got performance macros set up. And don't forget those can be kind of mapped as well. So if I go record, them in like that the other thing that i would say as well is if you're going to use the the banks and programs what i found is sometimes it doesn't work so just to make sure it does work if you're running like a sequence on this and you're not actually triggering anything put in a triggerless trig like that function and then press the trig and then just lock them on and um, just as a fail safe because sometimes i've noticed it doesn't work and then when you change pattern so let's say if we copy this pattern go to 10 paste that in and then what we can do is change oh, i'm actually changing the sequence there sorry right yeah so what we're gonna do now is change this now to Right, so now if I switch back to pattern nine, then go back to pattern 10, it should change the program. Seamless, absolutely perfect. Really powerful stuff in a live set. So next let's go back to pattern nine. And now we're gonna talk about the CCs. So you've got eight different um, values that you can send out to the Typhon. So, well, in this case, the Typhon, I mean, you might be using something completely different. You need to obviously check the manuals of the devices that you want to send MIDI to because it will have usually a CC list. If you're using like an older device, then it might be quite limited to what it can receive and send within that machine. With this, as you can see, if I go to the MIDI CC list, I've actually got a lot more parameters in there that are actually accessible in the modulators in the Typhon. Using an Electron device with this Dreadbox Typhon actually opens up the Typhon to have even more modulation capabilities. It gets really powerful. Um, so what I could do is I'll keep it quite simple for now. So if I just go to number four is cut off. This is just a list that you would see in the manual, but I really like that they put it in there. So what I'll do is go to the AMP page and then for... This first value here, I can go and select four. And then if I go back to the filter page, press function, enable it. In here, I've got full control of the cutoff now. So what I could do is what we did before. 
Actually, I don't want to be triggering this, so my bad. Let me just go back. Because I'm running the sequence off here, but what I might do actually is stop the sequence now. There we go. Let's just get something going. Um... So with this now, I could go to that value page. And then we could set up a different parameter. Uh, let's go to MIDI CC list again. Let's do the resonance next. So resonance is free. So let's go for free, go back to this. And these last notes, what I might do is just... Turn it up a little bit. Let's put a hat in. And then let's go back to nine now. So we've done resonance, let's just do a few more. So what else have we got? Yeah, we could do filter time, that's a good one. So then what I'll do now is go down to filter. Oh, you've got the individual um, envelopes on here, which you can't actually access normally, which is weird. You can only really access filter time, but we'll do filter time. So it's 31. We'll call this the last one. So we've got 31. Already it's sounding great. And let's record this one in like this. That's cool. I like that. And don't forget we can add delays and reverbs in the syntax to this. Which can be quite powerful if you've got a dry synth that doesn't have any effects on it. This one's obviously got three different effect slots, but sometimes I'll be using a delay on the third one and I can't have a reverb where now I can add a reverb in syntax on top of the three effects that run there. Let's send it into the distortion as well. What I might do is go to the import. Really bring that up. And then go into this drive. Yep. Let's turn it off on the input, on the reverb. I just use it on the effect block. So let's go back to that. It's getting a bit wrong there. There we go. We can always use the effects block as well to shift so. Let's go back to the MIDI track now. The other thing that we can do is let's save the filter if we want to, you know, erase that now. Um, what I can do is go back to record mode, hold no, and just hold this down to erase the locks. Or I could have just like muted it like that and then it's disabled. So what I want to do now is use the LFO. So this is the last thing I want to show you. Um, let's do that trick that I like to do with a randomizer. Um, and we could do it by trick as well, reset it, and then go to CC value one. We'll actually have to enable that again now. So what we're gonna do now is modulate that CC value, which is modulating the cut. Don't forget we can always change the position of uh, the filter by... Putting it there. That's cool. 
So that's how to set up an external device with the Electron Syntax to bring in audio, but also to send MIDI from the Syntax to an external device as well. And it really opens up external devices. Obviously using this as a sequencer, not only just for notes, but for things like the pitch bend, after touch mod wheel, breath controller, and then also the CC value as well. It's just so powerful. And the fact that you can select any CC value you want as well, really opens stuff up. Um, and also I forgot, yeah, the velocity. So that can be mapped as well. So yeah, you've got pitch bend, after touch mod wheel, breath controller. Then you've also got velocity on top of that, which can then in devices like this be used as a performance macro as well. Um, the things I didn't touch upon, is obviously the ones that we've already gone over with other synths. It's the same thing. You've got length there and the probability and conditional locks. Obviously, that's for changing the note value and you can turn LFO retrig on and off. And yes, we've got the LFO as well, which really opens it up. So there's just so much to explore there. And in the, in the expert course, I'll probably do a little bit more on this as well. And we'll go even deeper and come up with some cool tips and tricks to use with an external device.